A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore. On the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered Jesus, saying, No! So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 fish. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Now Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. So Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Then feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, 
you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We remain standing as we invoke the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator, bless, and in our hearts take up of thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus says, do you have anything to eat here? Children, have you anything to eat? And they answered him, no. So he said to them, well, I need you to fish me something to eat. Jesus, in his body, his glorified body, is hungry. And what is the body of Christ? The body of Christ is your husband, your spouse, your children, all those around you. They are looking to be fed. They are hungry. When I was still in the seminary a long time ago, long time ago, we used to go every single Saturday to a homeless shelter run by the Sisters of Charity, the Missionaries of Charity, the order founded by St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And I'm going in a car with one of my classmates and my phone rings and it's another classmate and he's asking me, he says, what are you doing? And I said, well, we are going to the homeless shelter to feed the homeless. We are going to feed the homeless. And my friend was in the car with me, the other seminarian, he yanks the phone away from me, turns it off. And I said, what are you doing? What'd you do that for? And he says, he stopped the car even. And he says, you're not going to the homeless shelter to feed the homeless. You feed dogs and cats. You are going to the homeless shelter to serve the homeless because the homeless are human beings. You feed animals. You serve people. You feed animals. You serve people. You see, it's easy to come here and to be this great follower of Jesus. Because we're all followers of Jesus. Because we know him. You know him, so you follow him. But to make the jump from Knowing and following to loving is to be serving. Those who know God follow him. Those who know Jesus follow him. But those who love Jesus serve him. And to serve Jesus, you serve him in his body. That's why he says after the resurrection, when he appears in his body, he says, do you have anything to eat here? I'm hungry. Isn't that what Mother Teresa experienced in her call within a call? She called it a call within a call. 
She's, when when the, the first reporter that interviewed her from the BBC that put her out into the world, he looked at what she was doing, you know, tending to the lepers and to, to all the, the people abandoned on the streets and dying, infested with maggots. And he says, I wouldn't do what you are doing for a million dollars, the reporter says to her. And she looked at him and she says, well, I wouldn't do it for a million dollars either. But I'm doing it for Jesus. Matthew 25. Whatsoever you do to these, the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. Whatever we do to those around us. And it's easy to, you know, to say I'm going to do it out there. You know, or to be nice out there in the street. Okay? But it's another thing to be nice at home. Huh? With your loved ones. Because with your loved ones, so often, the only way you come out well is in pictures. Because mm? mm? who is it that betrays you, that hurts you? Mm? <laughs> what did I talk about? <laughs> 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 it, we come out well with our family in pictures it's called patience patience I, 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 every day I, 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 I put, put on all of that holy water you know to, to, to kind of a lot of patience because you know, I need it with all of you <laughs> the things that happen just before mass today Somebody was chewing out, you know, uh, one of the people who help here in the church. Um, it's just unreal, okay? And so you need a lot, we need a lot of patience. And you have to remind ourselves that the way I treat you is the way I'm treating Jesus. And the way we treat one another, whatsoever we do to each other, we do to Jesus. And yet, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of you are saying, oh, you know, Father, you know, you're so right. And your husband comes home from work all day. And what do you do? What do you tell him after he's been at work all day? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> I'm going to feed you. <laughs> Isn't that? I just hear it. I, Sit down. I'm going to feed you. <laughs> Instead of, I've been waiting for you all day. <laughs> Sit down, my love. Let me take your shoes off. <laughs> huh? Because we are called to be servants of one another. And to serve God is to serve those around us. And it's easy to put on a happy face at work because they pay you them. It's another thing, you know, to put on a happy face at home. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> So, we are called to be servants of each other. Now, numbers in the Bible have a meaning. I read this one to you uh, twice, and you know, I do it for emphasis. Twice is a biblical thing, you know. <laughs> what did we read here? How many fish were there? All of you paid attention, because I read it twice, so I'm sure you paid attention. How many fish? 153. Wow, you did pay attention. I'm so proud of you. 153! Now, you know, there isn't any coincidences in the Bible, and numbers are very important in the Bible. If you know anything about biblical history and the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, numbers were very important. Now, there's 153 fish there? No, because there was another fish that Jesus was cooking. So that means there is 154 fish. Oh, thank you. 154. Now, half of 154 is... All of you mathematicians. 77! I did the math for you. Okay. 77 fish. Now what is this all about? 77. Peter would have gotten it because he feels all down. He's all down and dejected because he has just abandoned Jesus. He just betrayed him. He's down in the dumps. Because of his mistake. He, he, 
feels like he can't go on. How is he, how is he gonna live now that he, he betrayed the Lord, he betrayed his best friend, he betrayed Jesus when he most needed him. You often feel the same way, you know, when you betray the people in your life. Hmm? Because through your cheating, through this mistake, through this error, through this sin, through that. And so Peter is in the dumps and Jesus comes and gives him a message and says, Ah, oh, Peter, what did I tell you about forgiveness? Seventy-seven. What is the number in the Bible? Seven. It means forever because God is forever. That's why seventy-seven times seven when Jesus asks, uh, when Jesus tells Peter about forgiveness just means forever. In perpetuity. Perpetuity, you know what that is? That's one of the University of Chicago words that means forever. Huh? Forever! And ever, and ever. Hmm? God always forgives. This is what Peter is trying to inject into himself through the words of Jesus today. That God is in the forgiveness business. In the Bible and for the Jews to say something two times means emphasis, like the singing of songs. That's why in the Bible we have the song of songs. It means that it's like very, very, very important. Like when the Jews wanted to say that something is beautiful, they wouldn't just say beautiful. They would say beautiful, beautiful. Okay, remember these are translations that we are getting here from the original languages. So uh, the it just means that it's super, super important. Like to say pretty, we, we would say something is super pretty. Well, they don't have that. They say pretty, pretty. Huh? Like a great song would be Song of Songs. So 154 is super important for Peter because he has just denied and abandoned Christ. And he feels failed. Like a zero for doing what he did. And Christ reminds him of 77. That God, the number seven in the Bible, is the perfect forgiveness offered to you. Pure forgiveness, pure mercy, pure compassion. That God forgives us and forgives us and forgives us until we finally grasp that we have been forgiven. And only this is what Peter gets to allow him to move on and to be the rock upon which Jesus builds his church because he took in the mercy and offered that mercy. That even though you may feel unforgivable for what you did, how many of you have grief and regret in your life because of a loved one that has died and so often the grief and the regret in people's lives, like when you lose a husband or a wife when they die, people come and they talk to me and what is it? And I, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that. I, I, I'm so sorry for the mistake I did. You know, I, I wish I would have been better to my parent, to my father, you know. I, and, and, and you have all of these regrets in you that keep bothering you. And this was Peter. He, he, he felt regret that he betrayed Jesus. And Jesus comes and says three times, Peter, do you love me? Peter, come on now, three times, emphasis. Do you love me? Because I don't care, Peter, that you betrayed me. Like your loved ones in heaven don't care what you did to them. You think they're, they're worried about what you did to them? No. What do they care about? That you love them. So ask yourself the question. I'm freeing some people right now here, okay? I'm lifting you a big stone that you've been carrying around, a big rock of regret uh, because of what you did or what you didn't do. Uh, you think they're over there worried about what you did? No. What do they care about is if you love them. So ask yourself, did I love my husband, my wife, my parents? Yeah, that's all that matters. That's what Jesus tells Peter. Do you love me? Because that's all that matters. And you are forgiven. 154, Peter. Twice. So God begs you to accept his forgiveness. And this offers you freedom. And this is free. 
Now look, Jesus arrives and says, I am hungry. Help me. God says this to you as well. Hmm? To those around you. That you help them. And how do we help those around us? By offering them the same thing Jesus offered Peter. Mercy, forgiveness, compassion, understanding, and patience. I spoke about Mother Teresa of Calcutta today. All of you know who she is, correct? Raise your hand if you know who Mother Teresa of Calcutta is. Perfect. If you don't, Google her. <laughs> now, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, when she began her ministry with the poorest of the poor in the 1940s, when she left the Sisters of Loretto and began the Missionaries of Charity, she needed bread for all the poorest of the poor, forgotten, dying people that she picked up from the streets of Calcutta. And she went to the biggest baker in the city of Calcutta that had multiple, multiple bakeries all over Calcutta. And he would throw away the stale bread that was still good to eat, but you couldn't sell it anymore. And she went to him and she said, give me your day old, your two day old bread so I can feed the people in my homes. Give me your one day, your two day old bread. And you know what he did? He spit in her face. He spat in her face. And you know what Mother Teresa did? She wiped the spit all off of her face. And she said, thank you. And now, please give me the bread. <laughs> Absolutely. And now, please give me the bread. He became the biggest benefactor of the missionaries of charity. And they never lacked for bread in her homes. Not only that, he testifies to this day, the testimony is available online, his witness, this baker's very rich man, one of the richest in Calcutta, that her humility broke him. Her humility broke him. Three and a half years after this event, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Everybody here has people who spit in your face. Especially your husband or your wife or your kids or your brothers, your sisters, your family members, your friends, your, your co-workers. I'm speaking. I'm speaking. You're surrounded by people who spit in your face. And what do you do when they spit in your face? Do you follow the example of Jesus? The example of Mother Teresa of Calcutta? Or do you spit back? An eye for an eye, says the Bible, will make the whole world blind. An eye for an eye will make the whole world blind. You are to be different. You come here praying, Oh, I want my husband to change. I want my wife to change. I want my kids to change. What are you doing about it? 
How are you bringing about the change in their life? You know, when my grandfather would come home, all drunk, vomited on, peed all over himself, everything, I'm not gonna get into everything else, okay? My grandmother wouldn't call us over and wouldn't say, look at him! She never did that. She'd send us to sleep and say, your grandfather is sick. And she would pray for him, for him, her rosary. Huh? And when he was dying of colon cancer, and you remember he was an atheist. And that's what the communists taught him. He said he was an atheist. He would pray and I heard him. God of my wife, the God of my wife, help me, he would pray. Help me. Because that was the only God he knew. The God that was in my grandma. Hmm? You may be the only Bible the people around you will ever read. What are they reading? Are you the body of Christ? Are you the 77 times 7, 7? Hmm? Do you do what she did? Now give me your bread. Hmm? Or do you... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is the attitude? Huh? Let us reflect on that today in our daily lives. We can all be great, you know, great followers of Jesus. Because you know him, so what, you know? But to love God. That's why Jesus asks Peter that three times. You didn't pay attention, I'm sure you did. So he asked him three times. That's biblical emphasis. Do you love me three times? And if you love me, Feed my lambs. Serve them. If you love God, you serve him. And you serve him in one another. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We stand and we profess our faith together. I believe in one God. Amen. Amen. Amen.